So I'm going to talk about the Flood Mount SW8 topper, which is this device here. Um, it was predominantly designed around the 308 box. Um, it will also work with the Hensel box, um, and it will work with these other whisker boxes as well. Um, predominantly, I'm going to stick with the whisker brand right now, and we'll cover anything else later. Um, so with the 308 box, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these four outside fixings here. So that actually lines up perfectly with the external fixings there. Um, if you're going to use a 108 box, um, you can use these on the, on the 108 box, you've got the two internal fixings here and here um, and you can remove two of these screws, move them up to here and move the nuts up to here um, and basically mount to there, so that will be mounted there. Um, if you're going to use the 407 or 607, well the 407 you can use the grey bracket that comes with the box, you can use that grey bracket there um, and that will fix to there and there if you wish. Um, alternatively, you could use an adapter plate like this so this adapter plate actually screws into those two fixings there and there um, and then you use these four fixings to then fix the external fixings on the box and the same you can use uh, one of our adapter plates, our 607 adapter because this is a 407 adapter but a 607 adapter to a 607 box and that will fit on there as well absolutely fine. Um, you could possibly get, you could actually fit a 1010 box to this, um, the only thing is obviously it's going to sit quite high on the mount by the time you put your floodlight on, it's going to be quite tight, um, but it could be done. Um, also, with a 1010 box, you're not going to have a lot of room for your SWA glands. Um, but yeah, it's just something to sort of be just to be mindful of. Really, I'd recommend sort of the limit at 607. So, I'm going to show you how the um, 308 box mounts um, and show you some of the features of this, and then we'll show you about the um, mounting, etc., of that. So firstly what we can do is we're going to remove the cover of the um, 308 box and then we're going to remove these four screws from the mount. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're just going to offer the box up to our mount and carefully screw through each corner. <laughs> Try not to lose your screws like I just did. Right, I'm just going to pop the lid on there. So, talk about the um, ground mounting options because obviously at the moment you can't actually mount it in the ground. What you need to do is you need to purchase either some horizontal longs or horizontal standards. So here's our horizontal standard uh, here and here's our horizontal long which I show in another video. Um, essentially your mounting positions can be either centrally there so a single spike or you can use two spikes mounted there and there and you can do that using these holes in the bottom and they're designed perfectly to line up with our um, spike mounts, uh, spike the screws on the spikes themselves. So what I'm going to do for this particular one is I'm just going to use one horizontal standard. Normally I would recommend for most ground types two horizontal standards and if you have um, particularly soft ground, so like fresh soil etc, then that's when you really want to go for horizontal longs um, and you can really sort of mix between one or two there, it's completely up to you, you kind of have to determine what your ground type is like. So I'm just going to quickly mount this spike to it. Pop my screw through there and screw through there. Offer that up, offer my spike up to that. And then just screw my screws into the spike. Now, this particular mount has an extra feature whereby you can secure the cabling, um, particularly useful with SWAs, etc., because sometimes they pull a bit and they can pull, put a bit of strain on the box. What you need to do is take your cable tie, put a nice bend in it, just because what's going to happen is you're going to go through these holes here, through the hole in the uh, extra mount there. So if I push that through, Sometimes you have to use your finger on the back side just to get it through, but there you go, that's in. 
you can do your cable tie up and that secures your cable and you can basically you can see that that's ideal for SWA by the time it starts to get buried um, or you know you could use it for flex MY etc now for mounting the I'm just trim that off um, for mounting the um, floodlight you've got three options or three fixing points um, which depends on your floodlight really as to what's going to line up uh, we provide it with a central fixing screw and washer but you might need a pair of pliers here to do it tightly because there is no actual square mount on the back of this at present so what you can do is you can just take your bracket put your screw through pop your screw through there and do your nut up Now it's slightly easier said than done and you could always put the screw and the nut up the other way if you wish. But I mean otherwise you'd probably have to take the bracket of the light off, but you would anyway if you have mounted these to a wall or similar anyhow. Um, but that just gives you an idea of how it mounts. So there you go, if I just push this down over here. And if we were going to have our floodlight mounted, then we've got a perfect mounting option there. So let's just bring that up to show you there. There we go. Um, and then, you know, obviously you could either use top gland or side gland. Personally, would you, I would go to the side um, just because you don't really want holes in the top. Um, and then the ideal thing for centre fixing is that you can swivel this round whichever any way you want to. Um, sorry, obviously this isn't completely tight right now, um, but it gives you an idea of how it actually functions.